One of the areas that Dungeons & Dragons can sometimes struggle with is the idea of exploration and travel. I've talked about it on this show before. I've offered a lot of tips and tricks for ha how to handle exploration and travel. But one of the groups that seems to have done a pretty good job with it is Cubicle 7, when they did it for their Lord of the Rings-based 5e fantasy game. Well, they have now taken that idea and put it into a separate product, a separate book that you can pick up for 5th edition that you can drop into any of your 5th edition games. And that is known as Uncharted Journeys. You can pick it up right off of their website. I would recommend picking it up off of their website because the hardcover book is a, is a really, really beautiful book. And given the price of the PDF, it's actually probably worthwhile to get the physical book and the PDF. Again, as always, you can find a link in the show notes, but we're going to take a look at why I think this book is a really outstanding book for handling travel in D&D. Uncharted Journeys by Cubicle 7 is a 294-page book. It is a gorgeous hardcover book as well. I, I picked up both the hardcover version and then I got the PDF and hardcover bundle. They did not sponsor this. This is my own unbiased, moderately unbiased view of the book, but it is not a sponsored version of the book. The reason I'm talking about it is because I think it's really awesome. And one of the things that it focuses on is the idea that you have roles for travel. That right up front, when you're talking about traveling across the lands, that you have specific roles that you can take. And the roles that it has, it has four different roles. The leader, the outrider, the quartermaster, and the sentry. The leader is the one who's kind of making sure everybody else is on board, everything is going smoothly, deciding where they're, they're going to go. Again, we just talked about that idea of having a, a caller from the Dolman Wood book, and this is an idea for that, but capable of organizing and encouraging the team to persevere through challenges. Then we have the Outrider, who scouts ahead of the group, finding safe routes, tracking threats to the party. We have our Quartermaster, who's responsible for equipment, keeping stuff together, making sure everybody's well hydrated, making sure that they're all changing their socks regularly so they don't get, the, they don't get trench foot, all the kind of stuff that, we, that you need to do while you're, while you're doing lots of travel. And then the Sentry is keeping an eye out for the surroundings. Now, when I've run exploration like this, I usually drop it down to actually three roles instead of four. I usually have like the Pathfinder who's like what's the path that you're actually you know what's what's the path that you're actually following what's the who's got the who understands what the path is that you're following and are you on track and if and then you can have them roll checks on that and if they fail to check then you kind of get off the beaten path maybe it takes longer to travel maybe they run into a place they don't want to run into but you have essentially whoever's got like the map and the compass and is looking at landmarks and making sure you head in the right direction that was one role a second role is that idea of like a sentry who is keeping an eye out who's the scout who's making sure you don't run into a den of rune bears who's making sure that you're not going to get jumped by bandits who's keeping an eye out for threats that are out there who's looking at the ground and be like i just saw dinosaur tracks we probably don't want to go that way because there's a tyrannosaurus rex going that way right you want somebody that's looking at that and then that quartermaster role who's making sure that everybody's got the food and water and that the pacing is correct who's making sure everybody's going well i found those three roles to work really well this idea of also having a leader role is a good one and the more roles you have the more options there are for different characters to take on different areas of responsibility what's neat is that these roles are independent of the classes they pick there are certain skills that can help them manage these classes and they talk about it here in the book what what are the different what are the different skills proficiencies that work well for any of these different for any of these different roles and you want them to be up front like you don't want people to select a role and not realize what they're good at and you also want to make sure that the roles have a wide variety of skills that maybe if you're a scout maybe athletics and acrobatics works well because you're climbing up a mountains and you're doing stuff like that but also it helps if you're doing like perception or investigation and skills like that and you might have them roll different checks in order to see what they discover as they're going through Sentry, of course, would also be based on like you could have nature, you could have perception, you could have investigation, like who's keeping who's keeping an eye out for stuff. Now, one interesting thing they do is they also say like, hey, based on your classes, here are different ways that your class can have a benefit when you're doing overland travel. So instead of just having those roles and you pick those roles, which is what I do, it's very straightforward and very simple, is you can actually say different classes have different abilities while you're going on travel, a whole system for this, which I thought was really interesting. 
You know, it's like, oh, that's kind of a neat idea that you could actually, you know, between encounters, you can spend hit dice to recover spell slots. You can spend a number of hit dice. So these are all different things that you can do while you're traveling on the assumption that you're traveling under good circumstances. Then there's a whole chapter on journey rules. Like how, what's the actual pace? What's the distance? How do you measure out how long it's going to take? How do you figure out the difficulty? What are some example weather conditions? Now here's where things get really interesting. And this is sort of like a, a bivariate way that this book handles it. And I didn't really understand this until I got in later and oh, and suddenly my my eyes were opened and I was like, wow, this book is seriously valuable. Like this is like, we're going to come to it. There's one thing where I was like, oh, sure. Roles. Yeah. But I've got roles in Lazy DM's Companion. Do I really need a whole book about roles? Eh. And I was like, okay, well, it doesn't even list the weather. Like what good is that? Right. And there was like, when I was getting through this, like, yeah, the class stuff is kind of neat, but is it, is it worth, you know, a $60 book and 300 pages? I don't know. Just wait, just wait till you get to the cool bit. So it talks about all of them. How do you assign your roles, making your preparations, lots of ideas about like the nemesis. Is there somebody chasing you down that you have to worry about? Lots of cool stuff like that. Hirelings, packing things up, the animals, the pack animals that you have, whether you're, whether you're riding on animals or whether you're having them carry your stuff, how to make the actual journey itself. What are some encounters that you have? And then you have these like encounter types, Right chance meeting, hidden reserve, bump in the road, needing assistance, danger of foot, natural wonders, monster hunt, place to rest, old memories, dark place, and the region, coast, desert, farmland, forest, frontiers. So this is the bivariate nature. You have a, different types of encounters on the left, but then all of those have different kinds of encounters based on the region that they're from. So a huge like bivariate way of looking at what potential encounters might happen while you're going through travel. So instead of just saying like, here's a list of potential encounters and you roll on that list, you actually roll first to see what type of encounter it is. And then you can look over at the location and that will tell you, hey, here are the different kinds of locations. So that I thought was really, really Really, really powerful. Really interesting. I'm going to show more about that. More about rewarding XP, meaning who you meet along the way, right? What what kind of places you find, backgrounds of people that you meet, bunch of sample encounters. Partway through the book, you come to an ancient ruins section, which is a whole generator for developing locations that they might run into while they're on travel. Who built it? How old is it? What was it originally? What does it look like now? What is it used for now? Great questions to ask. I really, I love this idea. How old is it? Who built it on one table? You know, looking at the different groups, it gives descriptions of like, what would it be like if this was built by aberrants or elves or giants? You know, that, that's a fantastic way to kind of come up with really interesting locations. You know, what, what, what did it used to be? Archive, crypt, manor, all that sort of thing. When you start to mix all these variables together, you really come to dozens and dozens, hundreds of different potential locations. That, that they could, hundreds of different locations that your characters could explore. What does it look like? You know, is it hollow? Is it reclaimed? Is it restored? Is it shattered? What is it now? A chapter on journey encounters where it tells you about the kind of encounters that you would have, what, how it affects the different checks that you would give to your, give to the different roles and what they might learn at each of these things. Really, really handy. So here's where we come to the section where I was like, oh, now I know what this book is about. Because we're only like 64 pages out of 300 pages. But now we get to the real meat of the book, which are all of the different pieces of information we need for any of the different potential environments that the characters might explore in. So for example, we have coasts. You have all the different kinds of weather that might occur in the coasts. Flora and fauna, the kinds of things they might find there. The local inhabitants, who might hang out in this particular area. Points of interest, you know, just a small set of points of interest or possible journeys that they have. And then for each of those different types of encounters they have a bunch of different random encounters so a chance meeting could be one hidden reserves is another bump in the road is another needing assistance ranger of danger of foot natural wonders monster hunt a place to rest old memories a dark place deadly fight fateful encounters and it has that for every one of those environments so you have a whole bunch of different types of encounters for every type of location and then a bunch of encounters for that type so it means that there are hundreds and hundreds of different ideas that are all well spelled out you know, like vultures circling in the distance watching and waiting for the prey to succumb to dehydration or their wounds chance meeting love letters a half orc rides on a two humped camel across the dunes the personal messenger of two lovers situated on either side of the desert she is handsomely paid handsomely and enjoys the solitude right just a chance meeting somebody you run into so what's really really cool is just the sheer number of potential encounters for different environments this book is packed with them that is the majority of the book probably about 
four-fifths of the book are all of these different encounters that you can have. And this, to me, is what sets this book apart from like any of the other books that I've seen that handle exploration, is just the sheer number of cool encounters that people have come up with. Three, four-sentence encounters for you know, 10 different ones for 10 different kinds of encounters for dozen, you know, more than a dozen different kinds of locations. That is just piles of stuff. So as soon as I saw this, I was like, ah, oh, this is where my money went. This is what I wanted. And this is why I think this is an outstanding book for fueling your ideas for exploration when your characters are going from place to place. So that is Uncharted Journeys by Cubicle 7, a fantastic book. Really glad I picked it up and a book that I think definitely picked one problem, which is how to handle exploration and travel and gives you good, solid guidance, good, interesting system, and lots and lots of inspirational ideas to run travel in your 5e games. I really love it. I'm really glad I picked it up. Every month on the Sly Flourish Patreon, we have the Sly Flourish Patreon Q&A. Patrons can ask any question related to tabletop role-playing games. I answer every question every Friday morning, and then some of them make its way to this show where we talk about it when they have a, when they, when they cover a topic that I think is valuable to a lot. Lots of DMs. 